Hi, welcome to Chair Chats, the lifestyle talk show with a disability twist. I'm your host, Pauline Victoria. As somebody with a disability, I understand we can find ourselves in situations where we feel like we have no power, where we feel we are at the mercy of what others say we can and cannot do. And our independence is only as good as our supports and resources allow us to be. To a degree, that is true, but it is not the whole truth. In this episode, we're going to talk with life coach and advocate Amanda Haranoth, who has reclaimed and exercised her personal power as an individual with a disability. But before we jump in, I want to remind you to please subscribe and share. And I'd like to invite you to my private Facebook group called Crip Chat Club via Zoom. If you like what you see, please support us at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Amanda, thanks for being on Chair Chats. I want to welcome you to the show. And I'm really excited about this topic because um, it talks about our personal power, which I think is available to all of us, even though sometimes as people with disabilities, it is hard to find. Um, so I'm really excited for our audience to get to know you a little bit about your journey of reclaiming and exercising your personal power. So let's just start there. Let's have you share a little bit about who you are and let's go from there. Sure. So my name is Amanda Haranoth. I am a disability empowerment life coach, motivational speaker, poet and special olympics athlete and global ambassador for the same organization uh, just I, I i think what's most important to to realize and to to understand is that for for so long people with disabilities have been marginalized and I think one of the things to realize about personally stepping into your power, it's getting rid of labels, getting rid of the crutches that hold us back or the, the chains that prevent us from who we are called to be. I don't know about you, but for me personally, I am sick and tired of being treated as if, oh, you have autism or you have, you know, this type of disability. Well, what are you going to do with your life? What do you mean? What am I going to do with my life? I'm going to do exactly what I told you I was going to do with my life. Now, what are you going to do with your life and mind your own business, by the way? <laughs> I, I, I think that having a disability, it, allows us to step very much into our own personal power. And it really just depends on what you choose to do with it. And for me, one of the things that I really love, I, I don't know if you're a Disney fan, but I absolutely love Frozen. So I absolutely resonate and identify with Elsa and her transformation, especially in Frozen 2, the sequence show yourself and there's a line in the song show yourself step into your power when I heard that it literally gave me chills because I felt like they were talking to me like I really need to honestly step into my power so not only did I um, become a trained life coach I was uh, fostered on principles of um, ontology study of being so we learned a lot about how to be who you're going to be and for me personally how that would hold up in the the rest of my life i think when you you choose to be 
a certain way and you choose to have a certain presence and a certain presence to yourself, it allows you to just um, manifest what you want your calling to be. Now, for me personally, growing up as uh, a Christian, Baptist um, in childhood, when I was 19, I decided to switch up a little bit and I eventually became Methodist. In becoming Methodist, that's where I truly found my, not religion, but relationship with Christ. And I think it allowed me to, in that time, go on this journey that was always in the future, I just needed to start looking for it. I needed to start walking towards it. And then eventually I needed to start running towards it. And then eventually I would be soaring to it like an eagle. Um, but I, I found a lot through my writing, which I, I started to write seriously at the age of 26. And this came about after I was diagnosed with uh, autism spectrum disorder. I didn't know what else to do. You know, the, we, we know that, you know, there, there's no medication for it. There are other medications that you can take if you have um, other coexisting conditions along with the autism, but for autism itself, hey, you know, if I, if I could go to a pharmacy and pick up my autism pills to make sure that I don't have a meltdown today, I would love to do that. But no, no such luck with coming up with that yet. So I, I had to find other ways to just explore what I was going to do with this newfound information. So I decided to, to write. Um, in fact, I, I kid you not, my, my dresser and I've got bins just full of various size notepads and notebooks and just stuff kind of all over the place, just at my disposal to write anytime I've got pens and pencils all over the place. Cause as Stephen King said, you should always, always keep a pen and paper with you. So <laughs> I, I don't read his books, but I do take his advice. <laughs> so always have a pen and paper with you. Uh, got in trouble for that. Well, no, it was one of the risky things I did while I was working my my job. I was supposed to be answering the, the phone <laughs> and taking messages and stuff like that. And instead, I'm sitting there like doodling in a, a notepad. And that became one of the um, poems that would eventually be featured in my, my first poetry collection. And it dealt with uh, racism. It was called Just Like Birds. But I, I felt you know, so strongly about kind of what was going on in, you know, 20, what was it, 16, 17. So I essentially wrote down everything that I felt at that time. Didn't matter what it was at that time. I needed to write it down. I, I felt that my soul was speaking and I had to listen. You said so much in that and um, you mentioned labels and you mentioned how after your diagnosis, you just felt a need to have a form of self-expression um, and reclaiming our personal power, you mentioned is getting rid of the labels. And I think labels in the sense of they define you and define your, like put you in a box Yes, labels are bad. They, um, because people come to you and meet you with their assumed or assumptions of what you can and cannot do, what you should and should not do, what you're, what you can or cannot become. And um, part of becoming everything you were meant to come, become in this life, um, means having to often reject what other people put around you in terms of that box. And I think people with disabilities are 
always having to be push themselves out of the box, whether it be in how they um, figure things out, in the way they think, in the way they interact with people. So I think that's um, a, a great point that you make regarding reclaiming your personal power is rejecting those boxes and those labels that people want to put on you. And part of that is advocating for a different way of looking at you because a lot of times people approach you and don't know, right? They don't, they don't know how to think of you in any different way. So we sometimes have to teach them. Um, and you do that sometimes with your poetry, like you, you like your poetry is what you're feeling in your heart and it's expressed in words and words are, are powerful in the sense that they can, can encourage people. Do you have a poem that you would like to um, share with us that maybe uh, gives us some insight into your heart um, yeah. about our power? Yeah, yeah. Um, so just just a little bit about this. Um, I was asked by the chief executive officer of the Special Olympics, I love her to death, um, if I would consider submitting one of my older poems that I had written just about three years ago to the Respect Campaign. The Respect Campaign is for the schools program within the Special Olympics. And I, I definitely didn't say no, but I also thought it would be most appropriate to go ahead and, <clears throat> excuse me, feel what I was feeling when it comes to being bullied, for instance. You know, I, I grew up being bullied. And many of my fellow athletes have similar stories to mine of being bullied, being mistreated. So I told my friend Elisa, I said, okay, well, you know, if I'm going, I'm going to do this, then I'm, I'm going to do it right. And it took me, I would say about 15 minutes. And I wrote this poem called Spread the Word. And I just happened to want to recite it for you now. <laughs> Yay. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Spread the Word. Spread the word all around the globe. We no longer have to be, <clears throat> we no longer have to be discriminated for our disabilities. When you see someone with autism, make them shine. Spread the word. You can no longer call me out of my name. You should feel shame when you call me out of my name. So I ask that you kindly reframe, protect our vocabulary from such heinous language. The R word, it's like a snake spewing venom. It breaks hearts and dehumanizes us all. Spread the word. It's like poison to our soul. We have to stop. We are better than this. Spread the word. The word retarded has no place among us. Thank you. I could feel the pain in that, like with the, with people using that word, the pain that causes yeah. others. Um, and hopefully, you know, like through shows like this, we can educate others. Um, and I, I'm of the mindset that one way that we exercise our personal power is by not giving it away. Um, uh, and I know it's easier said than done, right? I know that when someone calls us by a, a, a name or a label or treats us in a certain way. I've had people speak down to me like a baby, like, how are you? And I just want to punch them in the face. Um, <laughs> but lucky I don't have hands. So lucky for them. Um, <laughs> uh, I condone violence, but do it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, part of it um, 
you know, thank God I don't have hands because it makes me have to come back within myself and say, okay, they just did this offensive thing to me or called me this offensive name. And I get to choose now whether I'm going to put anger toward it and give that power away, or I'm going to reclaim that power and teach them a different way of treating me. Um, and I think we all have that opportunity to do that. And it is taking the high road, even though we want to sometimes just let people know how we truly feel. Um, it also can be very detrimental to us. So I think having um, a space where you get to express that anger in your poems is such a beautiful form of self-expression. Um, which is also, I, I think, another way you exercise your personal power is um, it doesn't mean we don't have to like express our, our, our upset with people, but we can do it in a way that is maybe constructive or, or you know, art is so powerful in that way that it allows us to, to pull that from us and feed that into our art. Um, for you, it's poetry. Well, one of the other ways that I go ahead and kind of express, as you call it, anger is by, I, I consider spread the word, a poem of strength. And there was another poem that I wrote a while back, which um, was actually, it's actually going to be used uh, this time around for the 2020 fall games, which I was so honored to be a part of in speaking this poem. Um, another one that I love dearly is called Northern California Pride, where it's among the same um, lines where I'm saying just have, you know, no Northern California athlete, uh, Northern California, you know, athletes have pride, even though people are quote, laughing at us because we might have Down syndrome or we might have things such as cerebral palsy. But I'm asking that you go ahead and that you have pride for who you are. And what I love so much about Northern California Pride, that piece, it actually incorporates the Special Olympics oath. Um, and the, the oath is, let me win. But if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. And I really love that last line of being brave in the attempt because for me and for many of the athletes that I um, play with um, on, on the various teams, we're brave in the attempt every day. If, if that makes sense, we, you, you are, are brave in the attempt getting up to, to do what you do with, with your, your hosting of podcasts and, you know, other various shows, knowing that the reaction may not be positive necessarily because people don't understand us, but you do it every day. So therefore you're, you're brave in the attempt of choosing to be who you are every day. If, if, if that makes sense in it, to me, I, I feel so empowered to be part of the special olympics obviously right now we can't we can't compete we can't we can't be on the track we can't be in the field we can't be in the pool we can't be on the courts but we can use our voice and that is one of the reasons why i am so happy that on top of being a special olympics athlete i'm also a we call them global ambassadors and we have special Olympics programs in over 192 different countries. So we have athletes and athlete leaders all over the world spreading their various messages in their own unique ways, in various languages, since this encompasses throughout the entire world, where you know that we have several different languages that we speak throughout the world. So it's, it's great. I'm a little bit sad that I can't be in more than one place because I, I would love to continue to take my message on the road and I would love for it to go ahead and reach a worldwide audience. Well, we could start now. <laughs> I don't know if my audience is worldwide yet, 
but it is getting beyond where you live in North Northern California. And I appreciate the reframe of your poem being uh, an expression of strength. I, I thank you for that and sharing that perspective with me. If people wanted to learn more about your poems or be able to read more of your poems, where could they find you? I have a website. It's poetmandy.com. You can go ahead and read my, my poetry there. I also have previous um, interviews that I've done, such as NPR, where I read some more of my poetry. And I'm also a trained coach currently open looking for clientele. Um, I support not only clients with autism, but Down syndrome, cerebral palsy. I am open to not only just supporting the client themselves with the disability or disabilities, I'm also open to supporting the family as well, because with every phenomenal disabled person, you have wonderful friends and family supporting you, whether they are holding you up, pushing your wheelchair, making sure they administer that medicine. If you're somebody who suffers from epilepsy, whatever it is, You've got your friends and your family who are helping you become the best you possible. We, we see that all the time in mainstream media. Become the best you. Okay, well, that to me extends to people with disabilities as well. So I'm going to become the best autism individual, the best vision impaired individual that I can be. I'm still gonna have these things at the end of the day, but I have friends and family and one heck of a community within the Special Olympics. And that's just one community that supports me. I have several communities who've reached out to me. They were like, Amanda, what can we do to support you during this time? Okay, I, I'm also starting to gain action in the world of uh, local politics, reached out to one of my local senators for my practicum project for the Special Olympics. And we are currently seeking better health care or health care in general for those of us with intellectual disabilities, because even right now during the coronavirus, we're, we're not seeing it. I have really yet to see coverage of what's going on with the coronavirus for those of us with intellectual disabilities. You'll, you'll see something, you know, like every now and then, and, you know, it'll be like a nice little one, two minute segment on the news. But for me, that's not enough. So I'm uh, trained as also a health ambassador and within the health, health ambassador realm, there are about I don't know, about five different options with that. I chose to reach out to local government. So my, my hope and my prayer is to eventually, I'm speaking to senators right now. So I eventually would hope to, you know, go to Governor Gavin Newsom and then eventually reach um, the, the incoming president with, my message. What advice would you give to those who don't have or don't feel they have those same supports that you're blessed with? Just keep, keep trying, keep knocking on doors. You have to establish that, that sense of community. I know that not everybody here is um, a Special Olympics athletes, but I truly believe that the Special Olympics, like they are they are here for you. Even like, like I said, we're not even in competition right now, but they, they'll help you. <laughs> like I said, leading, leading organization, leading sports organization in the world for those of us with intellectual disabilities. It goes far beyond just being good at sports. There are so many other avenues for, you know, those to, for for people with disabilities to explore. So I, I'm kind of biased. So I kind of recommend all of my friends to the Special Olympics 
because even if they can't necessarily or even if they don't want to necessarily participate in the sports aspect of it there's so many other things that they can honestly do with the olympics if you are somebody with or without a disability we all need support we all need people who can be there to cheer us on to champion us to um, encourage us to make us feel like we're not alone. Um, and sometimes, even though it's counterintuitive, we have to be the ones to put ourselves out there first. And that is also relating back to exercising our personal power, knowing that you have value, knowing that when you ask for your help, for someone's help, it's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength. Um, yes. and so, yes, it, it's, um, I want us all to step into that, like really take that in. Asking for help is a sign of strength and having community as humans, we are social animals. And at this time of recording, we are in COVID and I get that COVID is really placing a lot of us in isolation. There are ways for us to connect. Like Amanda, you mentioned that you wish you could be in other places to spread your word, but you are, you are spreading your word through being on shows like mine on NPR, um, you know, getting on other people's podcasts, um, interacting with um, others that don't know about you yet. Um, and the, the art of poetry that you have to share. And I want to encourage everybody that, is looking for a sense of encouragement to check out her website at poetmandy.com. Um, I'm, I'm going to go check it out. Uh, and so hopefully that's a, a place that you can find an encouragement if you don't have it right now. And another thing I would say to people who are um, don't feel like they have necessarily the supports and resources available to them right now, like Amanda does, like I have, um, she's a life coach. And as a life coach, Amanda is going to be able to not only give you um, the technical stuff, right, that she's certified as a life coach, but she also has that extra sense of compassion because she's been through it. So you're not speaking to someone who doesn't know what you're going through. She knows what you're going through and she knows what works has worked for her. Um, and so she's a tool that you can access. So if you're interested in her life coaching services, check her out. Uh, Mandy or Amanda, sorry. <laughs> I just want to call you Mandy. I feel like we're friends. Um, thank you so much for uh, being a part of Chair Chats, for sharing of yourself so bravely. I love that. Be brave in the attempt. Yes. That's so beautiful. Yeah. I love that. That's, that's, that's like a less. That's a universal lesson that we all can take with us. And I, I'd like to end there. Be brave in the attempt. I want to ask you, the viewer, and I'd ask you to come comment below and engage with us. How are you exercising your personal power in your own little micro space? How are you being brave in the attempt? And being brave doesn't mean that there is no fear. It's feeling the fear and moving forward anyway. Um, and I want to thank Amanda for um, recognizing that in me and recognizing that in herself. Um, and when we can do that, we can come to the world knowing our value and knowing that we can give more and become more of who you're created to be. So thank you so much for joining us on another episode of Chair Chats. I want to remind you to please subscribe and share. Join my private Facebook group if you're interested in getting more involved in this in the disability community. We meet every Saturday. It's called Crip Chat Club via Zoom. And if you like what you see, please support us at patreon.com forward slash one leg up productions. Thank you so much for being here. And until we meet again, be blessed. Mm -hmm.